Hello, welcome back to Retro Break and welcome to a very exciting video. This is some footage that I've been sitting on since I came back from Japan in mid-March this year so I really hope you enjoy a look around two amazing retro gaming shops. The first one we're going to be looking at here is Super Potato in Ikebukuro. A lot of people know Super Potato for the amazing Akihabara store but there is also another store in Tokyo that's just a little bit outside of Akihabara in an amazing place called Ikebukuro so enjoy this tour of the shop. And as you can probably already tell, just like the Akihabara store, this is jam-packed full of retro goodies. If you haven't seen my Akihabara store video, I'll put a link in the description so you can go and check it out. Because it is amazing, it really is. So let's take a look here at this cabinet which is down by the counter as soon as you go into the shop. This is where some of the really rare and expensive games are. Let me know if you spot anything really interesting. There was Snow Brothers for the Mega Drive and Comic Zone. Surprisingly, the Japanese version of Comic Zone is actually really expensive. I also just spotted Musha Aleste there in the Mega Drive, which is of course one of the most sought after shooting games on the system. And I just think that Compile make the most fantastic vertical scrolling shooters, so that's one game that I would really love to get in the future. And now taking a look at some of the PC Engine games in the other cabinet there, I just spotted Tatsujin at the end, along with a lot of other loose hue cards that are some of the more expensive and rare games. There's also Cotton there, and now we're moving over to the Sega Saturn games, and once again, an absolutely amazing selection of games for sale. Of course, all at very high prices, but you honestly get what you pay for. Super Potato is a more touristy shop, so you'd expect the prices to be a little bit more expensive, but you're also guaranteed that everything in here is of really good quality. So I really hope you enjoyed that quick look in the cabinet at the front. I really wish I'd got more footage, because as you can see here, I'm going straight to the back of the shop, but there was also a few other aisles down there that I didn't manage to get on camera this time, so I guess that's just a good reason for me to go back in the future and get another video from this amazing game shop. So they were walking down here, there were some, I think, Famicom games on one side, and it looks like boxed Famicom games on the other side here, and then at the back we've got some PS2 games. Some really interesting games on display back here. Unfortunately with the glare it's kind of hard to make out some of the covers, I think there was one of the Raiden games there, and this one caught my attention, this is a Mega Man game, I think. This is the Mega Man Classic Collection for the PS2, but I'm not entirely sure. Or it might be, looks like Mega Man Power Fighters or something, I'm not sure if that came out in the system. I would love one day to get a full set of Mega Man games, that is something that's on my list of things to collect in the future. And here we have some PS3 games, I can see um, Tomoyo After, the sequel to the Kleinad visual novel which is one of my favourite games and animes of all time. And then on this side here you can see some Game Boy Advance games in the boxes. And like I said in my last video, if you didn't see that one, there was one game in particular for the GBA that I was looking for called Magical Hoshin, but I couldn't actually find it anywhere because the title was entirely in Japanese and I didn't know what the box looked like. So thankfully the lady behind the till was very kind and she actually went and picked it up from this bit here where all the games are out on this rack. So I'm really grateful for that. And I think the game only cost about 300 yen as well, which is about less than three pounds. So pretty amazing overall. And I also picked up some more loose Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games from this section here. I can't remember exactly which ones I got from this shop, but I know I got some. And I do, I do still actually have a lot of pickup videos to do for the games I picked up in Japan, so definitely subscribe so you can see them in the future. I always think it's really amazing to come into a shop and just see a whole wall of loose Game Boy games. I could easily spend hours just flicking through all these without even seeing anything else in the store. But let's keep having a look around because there's way more amazing stuff to come. Like all of these loose Super Famicom games here, you can see they've got all of the different Dragon Quest games and they're actually reasonably priced as well if you just want cart only. And here's some of the more popular games, I can see Rockman 7, uh, Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong Country, Super Mario Kart, Mario RPG, all of the classics that you could possibly want. And then all of the other loose carts underneath there are all alphabetized by their hiragana characters. So if you know the name of the game and if you know your basic hiragana, you should be able to figure out what part of the shelf to look at. Now over here we're looking at all of the second hand consoles. You can see that amazing orange Pokemon Pikachu edition N64 and of course the blue and yellow one underneath which is the one that I've got. And if you saw my previous video that I did a few weeks ago, I actually picked up an Ice Blue N64 as well, Japanese edition, and I'm really happy with that. 
I've actually got a very exciting game coming for that soon, so definitely keep an eye out for that video when it comes on the channel because it's something really interesting that I don't even think a lot of people know exists, so I'm really excited to show that. So now moving on to some of the PS1 games, and the ones that you can see here are actually part of the Simple 1500 series, which is a big series of games that I was looking for some very specific games from. Unfortunately I didn't find the ones I was looking for there, but I would love to collect more of this series in the future. There's a really interesting variety of really simple, fast paced and fun games, like they have a really nice version of Tetris. They also have a lot of Japanese style puzzle games and things like that, so it's a really interesting little series to collect for. The one that I was looking for here in particular that I couldn't find was a drag racing game by my favourite developer Quintet called The Zero Yon, and I actually ordered it when I came back from Japan, and I've got it sat on the shelf back there now, so I'm definitely planning on doing a video about that in the future. And as you can see on this back wall here, there's just an insane amount of PS1 games. Far too many to cover in this video, but let me know if you spotted anything interesting. I can see Police Noughts and Metal Gear Solid there, two of the best games on the PS1. And on this next shelf over, we have some PC Engine games. These ones aren't as expensive as the ones in the cabinet. I saw one of the Shubibin Man games up there at the top. There's also some of the Valis games I think I could see there. And I think that game there at the bottom right is one of the Ran Maha fighting games and they're really really fun. There's so many great games on the PC Engine, I would definitely consider having a look at that system if you don't know a lot about it because it's one of the most interesting systems there is in my opinion. And surprisingly they even had a few Xbox 360 games. And down there at the bottom of the shelf was a few soundtracks. Now on this next shelf here we've got some Neo Geo CD games. They're always really interesting to look at, that's one of the only systems that I don't actually have. And below that are some Mega Drive games, and I just love how cool the Japanese boxes for the Mega Drive games look. Unfortunately, Mega Drive seems a little bit rare in Japan, so it's kind of hard to come by. And now on this side, a Sega system that's a bit more common, here's some Dreamcast games. I don't know too much about the Japanese Dreamcast games, but I'm sure there's a load of great games that are exclusive to the region. There was one game I was looking for in particular, one of the Godzilla games, and I couldn't find that one, but I did see the other one down there on the side. And here's another look at some of the PC Engine games as well. Just a bit of a closer look for you. There's the Shubibin Man game at the top there. There's also one of the Hue cards, I think, to connect the CD attachment. And we've also got PC Genjin, I think it is, which is also known as Bonk over in the UK and America. There's Xevious, of course, one of Namco's classic arcade titles. There's Power Drift, one of Sega's most impressive arcade games. Unfortunately, the conversion to the PC Engine wasn't the best but it still plays quite well considering the limitations of the system and I'm not sure what that game on the end there is but it certainly looks interesting and there I am taking a look at one of the PC Engine games that was one of the Shubibin Man games and I did actually end up picking up all the games in that series so I was really excited to finally get every game in that series and I am planning on doing a series review of it in the future so once again please subscribe to make sure you don't miss that video in the future and we're going to end our look at the Super Potato in Ikebukuro by taking a look at some of the Super Famicom games like I said at the start I wish I'd got more footage from this shop because there was so much more I could have shown you but like I said it's just a great excuse to go back and do another one of these videos maybe next year or the year after when the coronavirus has calmed down and everything's gone back to normal but let me know if you see anything interesting on these shelves of course the Goemon games are really famous in Japan and I kind of wish that I'd gone back and picked the rest of these games up I did pick up a few of them but I would love to get all the games in that series as well so I really hope you enjoyed that look at Super Potato now the next shop we're going to is one called Mandarake Galaxy and this one's actually in an amazing shopping arcade called Nakano Broadway I did a full video on Nakano Broadway when I went to Japan back in 2016, so I'll put a link in the description so you can go and check out the entire place. Unfortunately, this time, because of COVID-19, a lot of the stores were actually shut, but thankfully Mandarake Galaxy was still open, and I managed to get some amazing things while I was there. Unfortunately, I didn't get quite as much footage as I would have liked, but it's just a great excuse to be able to go back in the future and get even more. And like I said, I've already done a video about Nakano Broadway in the past, and it's just insane to think that in Nakano Broadway alone, there's 30 different Mandarake stores. But as you can see here, a lot of the stores that weren't Mandarake were actually shut, and it took me a long time to actually find Mandarake Galaxy as well, but I'm so glad that I did. But before we get to that, here's a look inside some of the other Mandarake stores. As you can see, this one's got an amazing array of really cool retro items. Some of these are incredibly rare, like thousands of pounds worth of rare. 
So it's just amazing to go and have a look at these. They're just as much of a museum as a shop in my eyes. It really is cool. I've never actually bought anything from these really expensive shops, but it is really nice to go and have a look around in. As you can see, they also have loads of anime memorabilia and stuff. And they also have loads of old Japanese toys, which was really interesting to see, considering it's completely different to the kind of toys that we had in the UK. And now here we are at Mandarake Galaxy, and you can already see in this cabinet, as soon as you see the shop, it's full of really rare games. Every single one of these games is really sought after. You can see some Famicom games there and some Super Famicom games here. There's the Pocky and Rocky games, there's Ease 5, which is a very expensive Super Famicom game. Let me know which other ones you spotted in that cabinet that are really interesting to you. There's also some art books, I think, and some guide books as well. They're always really interesting to see. And then up there, there's some Neo Geo Pocket games and some Wonderswan games as well. And I actually picked up a really interesting Wonderswan game, which I will show at the end of this video. That I'm definitely going to be doing a separate video on in the future because it is that interesting. And I did also pick up another quite expensive game called Hebereke for the Famicom from here, which I actually showed off in my pickups video. And unfortunately I haven't really had much chance to play it yet, but I'm definitely planning to in the future. And this will be quite interesting to a lot of you, here's a look at some of the Game & Watch games. Game & Watch can be very expensive if you want to try and collect for it, but I'm definitely looking to start a Game & Watch collection, I've only got like two or three systems at the minute. So if you guys could recommend some Game & Watches for me to check out, Definitely leave a comment down below because I am looking to get into collecting for gaming watches. Um, not sure if you can see the prices there. This video is in 4K so if you want to try and make it full screen and pause the video so you can have a closer look, feel free to do so. And all of that amazing stuff was before we even got inside the shop and just look how exciting this shop is. As soon as you walk in you're greeted by mint condition original Neo Geo AES games and that's just so exciting. I would love to get a Neo Geo system, it's one of the only consoles that I don't actually own. And I'm sure you can tell why, that's because the games are like £500 each if you want any of the good ones. Which is a little bit insane, but maybe one day. The Neo Geo CD is a lot more accessible, so maybe I'll end up getting one of them first. I'm actually waiting for the Poly Mega so I can play my Neo Geo CD games, because apparently that really improves the loading times. And if you can see here, those three uh, gold Super Famicom games there, they're also really expensive. I remember last time I was here, or I think it might have been in a different Mandarake, I actually saw the gold Rockman 4 cart for the Famicom, and that is worth thousands. So it's always really exciting to see these sort of games on display. And you can see there, there's some more expensive Sega Saturn games as well. I did have a bit of money, so I did end up picking up some of the games out of the cabinet, whereas usually I just look at these longingly and never actually pick anything up. So that was quite exciting to actually be able to buy some of these games this time. And I hope that next time I go back I'll have even more money that I can take with me and pick up some more of these really exciting games out of the cabinets. It really is one of my most favourite things to do in the world, so it's worth saving up. I know a lot of people probably don't agree with that, but that's just my opinion. And there's some uh, PlayStation 1 games, some quite interesting ones there. And once again, that was before we even had a look at the shop in question. So now we're having a quick look around. I think that shelf there on the left was full of uh, PlayStation Vita games. And here is a look at some of the Super Famicom games. There was loads to look at, and I did spend a good few hours looking through all these shelves. Probably much to the annoyance of my girlfriend and my friend, who actually went to sit down outside the shop and actually got told off by the security guards for sitting down. So they had to come and put up with me looking around the shop, but I did warn them, they, they decided to come along. And this isn't too exciting, this is mostly more modern stuff on this shelf. But at the back here, there's loads of these Famicom games and these shelves here at the back, which are always really exciting to flick through. And there's some DS and 3DS games. Unfortunately, the 3DS isn't region free, so I couldn't look at any of the 3DS games. But I did have a good look through the DS games. And here's some PS1 games, but once again they didn't have the game I was looking for, the Zero Yon. I even went to ask the guy behind the counter and he said, nope, sorry, don't have it. And they also didn't have the other game I was looking for, which was called Brightest. But I did end up getting them both online afterwards. So here's a look at all of the Famicom games. I really enjoyed flicking through all of the shelves here. And I love how they've got them displayed on the wall at the back. So let me know if you spot any interest in Famicom games. It's a system that I picked up while I was there and I'm looking to try and build up a good Famicom collection. So if you've got any recommendations for me, please let me know in the comments below. And, uh, and I'll definitely be doing some Famicom exclusive episodes in the future. And there's a few Super Famicom games there and there's a really cool Famicom Disk System poster. 
I don't know whether that was for sale or not, but I like it. And here's some Neo Geo carts, and you can see just how big they are, it's insane. And have a look at the prices as well. Some of the games aren't too bad, like some of the more common fighting games, but a lot of the more expensive games can literally go for thousands, which is a bit insane. Let me know down in the comments if any of you guys have got a Neo Geo console, and let me know what some of your favourite games are for it, that'd be really interesting to know. And then on this shelf here we have a load of PC Engine games, and of course this was another shelf that I really enjoyed looking through, but unfortunately it doesn't really work too well on video because all the spines are facing to the side. So if you can read any Japanese let me know if you spotted anything interesting there. There was also a few PCFX games, and there's a few more Neo Geo games down there as well. And over here there's some Wonderswan games I think, or they might be Neo Geo Pocket Colour. It's kind of hard, I always end up getting them two mixed up because the boxes look very similar. But there was a load of games there and I did have a good look through. And then over here on this shelf we have a load of Sega Saturn and Dreamcast games. I don't think I picked up any Saturn or Dreamcast games from this store, but once again it's really good to have a look around and I know that there's so many great Sega Saturn games, I've really got to try and do a bit of research into which ones are worth picking up. And then coming down the middle of the shop here we had all of the loose and all of the boxed Famicom games. This is where I got Hebereke from. They actually had it here and they had a slightly better condition one in the cabinet that I showed you at the start. And then on this side we've got some of the Super Famicom games. So there you go, that was a really quick look around Mandarake Galaxy and Nakano Broadway. I really hope you enjoyed it. In case you were wondering about what that rare game was that I picked up, it's actually this here, which is a Mega Man game for the Wonder Swan, and I am planning on doing a separate video just about this game in the future, so I really hope you look forward to that. So that's it for this episode, thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed a look at these two game shops. I still have loads of footage from Japan, but I'm not quite sure what to do with it just yet, so please subscribe and maybe there'll be more Japanese content coming soon. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next week for the next episode. Goodbye!